Before we wrap up this unit, I'm going to talk a little bit about the build process and how you build your Angular applications. So far, we've been using ng-serve in order to serve our Angular applications, and we've got a simple local dev server. And uh, it's also very handy in the sense that it's it's watching for your changes. When you make a change in the code base, it automatically updates it and refreshes it in the in the browser. But is this something that you would want to use when you're hosting your application and you're kind of making it available to the whole world? Well, probably not, because first of all, you don't really need the hot reload stuff. Uh, you don't want to be making changes to your code and have it immediately reflect, right? That's a waste. You don't want that process running either on your server or on your user's browsers. The second thing is, when you create an Angular application, you're basically having a whole lot of code that could potentially be optimized when you're hosting it on some server and you're making it available to your users. Now notice what happens when you do an ng-serve. Angular is looking at your code base, right? The, uh, the ng command, or the Angular CLI is looking at your code base. It bundles up all your modules and it creates this local server that makes it available for you, right? Now this is a development server. Now, why does it matter? Let me show you. I'm gonna switch to my browser. I'm gonna access the page. And uh, if I were to open developer tools and uh, click on the network tab, I'm gonna refresh the page again. Let me notice here, there are a bunch of JavaScript files that are loading. You see there is um, the runtime.js, styles.js, vendor.js, main.js. These are all pretty big files and they're not even minified. You see, it's basically loading the whole file as is. There are things that could be done to this file in order to optimize it. You don't wanna load the whole file a thousand times as our application is being accessed. You wanna be compressing this file. You wanna be minifying this file and you wanna be consolidating these JavaScript files so that you don't have so many that load when the page loads. So the reason why this works here is because we are using this in a different context. You're using this in a developer context. These are development tools. This is great when you're coding. But when you're deploying, you want to apply a whole lot of optimizations and then deploy. That's where the build process comes in. It also addresses this error that you have probably seen in the console when you run ng-serve. It says Angular is running in development mode. Call enable prod mode to enable the production mode. So when you deploy an Angular application, it eventually ends up being three files. And we covered that way back in unit one, right? Any front-end application like this, which doesn't have a server-side component, is basically, at the end of the day, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this is something that you can post and uh, deploy on a CDN and have the user load it without needing a server running at all times, okay? It's just static content. Now, how do you generate that static content out of this huge project? Right, you have a whole lot of assets here. There's a lot of stuff that's going on when you run ng-serve. How do you compress all this complexity down into just basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? That is using ng-build. ng-build runs the Angular CLI, which looks at your project and generates HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into one folder. And that is going to be independent of Angular CLI. That's gonna be independent of your node version or whatever. It is just static assets that you can deploy on an S3 bucket or any CDN for that matter and just have it be available for the user, right? No process required to run, no server required to use it. So I'm just gonna run ng-build. Now the Angular CLI is gonna run again. It's gonna examine your project and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna create this dist folder that you're gonna see over here when it's done. And uh, you see here, there is a dist folder. And here you see index.html, which is the starting point. And then you have a bunch of JavaScript files, which is everything that you saw in ng-serve, but now you don't need ng-serve to serve it. You can just host build proj and it's still gonna work, right? You can pause, you can uh, deploy this folder into a CDN and you can access it. So in order to demonstrate this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install 
a node package called HTTP server. I'm gonna say npm install HTTP dash server and make it global. What HTTP server lets you do is host a directory on your machine as if it's hosting on a CDN and you can access it locally. I'm gonna install it. After installing HTTP server, I'm going to run it. And the way to run it is to specify HTTP server and the directory that you want HTTP server to host. In this case, it's dist slash build proj. So I'm gonna say dist slash build proj. So now HTTP server is gonna create a simple HTTP server to its name, and it's gonna host the contents of this directory, which is where index.html lies. So I can access this URL and um, It should load the build. There you go. It's loading the Angular application, but you're not doing an ng serve, right? ng is no longer in the picture. You can take this directory, put it anywhere where you can host HTML, and it's going to work fine. People are going to be able to access that URL and load the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. However, you see that we have eliminated Angular CLI from the picture, but you still see this message. Angular is still being called in development mode. And if you look at the sources, or perhaps the network tab, you see nothing has changed here. Things are not being minified. So in order to do that, you have to run ng-build for production to help Angular create these assets in production mode. It's actually very simple. This time what I'm gonna do is ng-build, I'm gonna pass in a flag dash dash prod. This is gonna tell the Angular CLI that you need a production build. So when I run this, Angular is going to minify and it's also going to do something called AOT, ahead of time compilation. Uh, the whole process of ahead of time compilation is beyond the scope of this course, but in general what it does is it performs a whole lot of optimizations that the Angular CLI can do so that the code is minified and uh, Angular templating is pre-compiled, right? So that there's a bunch of Angular compilation that happens during runtime. It is going to pre-compile everything that can be compiled so that the Angular compiler itself is not shipped down the wire when somebody accesses our page. This results in the contents being significantly smaller and the performance significantly improved. Uh, the other thing that it does when it renders for production mode is it creates these hashes. You see here, it's not just main.js, it's main.hashvalue.js, polyfills.hashvalue.js. So the reason it creates all these hashes is so that you can actually take this value and you know take these files and deploy them to your CDN or some hosting environment. Anytime you change your code, and you run ng build dash dash prod, you're gonna get a new set of hash values. So you can actually cache your values on the server, knowing that when there's a new build, you're gonna get new file names that's referred to by index.html. As long as you're not caching index.html, it is going to fetch those new file names and um, you get the latest build while still leveraging caching. Again, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but let's actually see this in action. I'm going to run HTTP server on this again. Dist slash build proj. This time, you're gonna get all these hashes. If you go to the console, you're not gonna see that warning because this is running in production mode. And if you look at what gets transferred over the wire, you can see that, well, if you turn off the pretty print, the content that gets transferred over the wire is actually minified. You see here, this is what gets transferred over the wire. This might look misleading. It's actually Chrome pretty printing your JavaScript code, but if I were to disable that, you can see what is actually being sent. This is just Chrome showing your code with syntax highlighting and um, with indentation. But what actually gets transferred is the raw JavaScript. So this is how you build an Angular application to be deployed somewhere. You don't just do an ng serve and have you know people access your application in production. What you do is do an ng build with the dash dash prod so that Angular CLI knows that it needs to apply all the optimizations that it can, including ahead of time compilation. And then it's gonna generate 
HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for you in a nice folder that you can just put into any CDN and have it hosted. And people can access your Angular application without needing any server-side component or any such processes running at runtime.